So you want to know where oyster seed comes from? Well, like most things, it comes from a box. I received a call from Whit Strain from the Bodega Bay Oyster Company. He told me that later today he'd be receiving a shipment of Pacific Oyster Spat all the way from Hawaii. And if I wanted to check it out, I should come on down to the Flupsy. In the western U.S. coastal states, there are two primary types of oyster seed used. For simplicity, let's just call them Kolch and Kolchless seed. Colched oyster seed are oyster spat that's settled on a single piece of colch called spatted colch. And these will form an attached cluster of oysters. This is usually for oyster seed that's grown on bottom culture, but can also be for off bottom. This is sometimes called natural colch. Now, if you saw our YouTube video on how oyster spat is made in an oyster hatchery, then you know that colchless seed is produced by setting oyster larvae on a minute substrate, such as crushed oyster shell, which results in individual oysters. Most of the seed grown in our oyster industry is obtained through hatchery production. Most of the hatcheries that specialize in the production of colchless seed is shipped from Puget Sound, Washington, Humboldt Bay, California, Tillamook Bay in Oregon, and even from Hawaii. This hatchery produced seed accounts for almost 95% of the oyster seed used in the U.S. West Coast. Our shellfish growers in Tamales Bay, California regularly receive seed during two periods of the year and each shipment is maintained in the nursery area for different periods of time. Spring and early summer spat is maintained in the nursery area for three to sometimes up to six months before being redistributed to those grow out areas. When oyster seed is shipped to growers, it is harvested and placed in a poly bag. The seed is kept moist, but you won't find any extra water. The bag in the oyster seed is always placed in an insulated container in a shipping box and wrapped with an ice pack. So when the cultureless oyster seed arrives at the producer's site, usually the seed is examined and placed in a nursery and grow containers at specific densities to maintain the best growing conditions for those oysters for a particular nursery site. The oyster seed is loaded into a floating upweller system, which consists of a raft fitted with a number of culture chambers seen here used to hold the oyster spat. To learn more about the Flupsy, or how the Bodega Bay Oyster Company farms their oysters, you'll want to watch our YouTube video called How Oysters Are Farmed in California. I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video. Cultureless oyster seed is usually shipped to the growers as quarter inch or approximately 20 millimeters seed. Now the actual size range of the seed may vary a little bit but the hatchery prefers to release the seed as small as possible to reduce the cost and any risk associated with holding the seed for any longer than it has to. This is in contrast to what the growers want, which they prefer larger seed. So really, the quarter inch seed is a compromise on cost and convenience for both the shellfish producer and the hatchery. So in the Flupsy, the flow of water transports food and algae to the oyster seed. Now in the Flupsy, the loading densities for seed in each of those chambers are much larger than for more traditional containers. And depending on chamber size, pump, and site characteristics, those densities may range from 50,000 to 250,000, three to five millimeter seed per chamber. In this case, each of those bags is 250,000 oyster larvae. That's 750,000 oyster seed per each bin. That's going to be a lot of oysters. So the flow of water actually fluidizes the seed and lifts the mass without causing the seed to overflow. Now when they're really small, as you see here, we're going to use a lid. 
As you can imagine, with that many oysters per bin, maintenance is going to be essential to remove biofouling organisms as well as feces and pseudofeces from the bin. The accumulative effect can restrict water movement and limit the amount of food that's available to each oyster. All right, now that we're all loaded up, let's cinch those lids down. I don't know about you, but all this talk about oysters is making me hungry. I think these oysters are ready to finally get back in the water. Let's close this up, Wit, and head to the Oyster Bar for lunch. For UC Davis Aquaculture, I'm Dr. Jackson Gross.